listening to the Mark Bradford Alchemy for Life podcast. Grab the wheel, not the hood ornament. Hey there. In my talks about balance, and I have a few that are specific to balance and one's actually called Balance Through Transition, I talk about grabbing the wheel. And what I mean by that metaphor is that sometimes we go through changes that we don't seem to have any control over. And I tell people, grab the wheel. I'm not talking about, oh, we'll just take charge of your life and just take charge of this, that, or the other thing. Life is more complicated than that, and sometimes we have far less control than we think we do, usually. I'm talking about faking it in some cases. I'm talking about going up and grabbing the wheel and making it look like you're steering. You know, you're forced into a situation and you can just sit there in the passenger seat and look out the window and go, oh, well, you know, this is what this is what life has dealt me and that's all I can deal with. Um, but instead of doing that, you can go sit in the in the bus driver's seat and grab the wheel and make it look like you're steering, you know, and metaphorically what that turns into is people see that you're not just saying, oh, woe is me, you're saying, well, I have this thing going on and I'm just dealing. I'm just doing the best I can. And what happens more often than not is this wheel that you think doesn't move starts to move. Meaning you get control over something you thought you didn't have any control over. And maybe you steer a little bit, maybe you steer a lot. It's a very effective way to like keep your sanity. And to not feel constantly like you're the victim in something, because when you do that, you give up your perceptions and and your view of the outside world. You just go, well, yeah, this thing happened. I've done. That's 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 not good for for you taking care of you, which translates into this whole self care thing that people talk about so much. So what I'm saying is, that's something that's really important. And the reason I touch on that is because. I don't want that to go too far. And the title of this is Grab the Wheel, Not the Hood Ornament. And and so I'm saying, if you do feel like something has happened in your life and you want to get control over it, jumping through the windshield and grabbing onto the hood ornament to steal the to steer the entire bus or car or whatever metaphorically you want to imagine is really a bad idea and it's a really good way to get run over. The difference between grabbing the wheel and doing that is one is sort of intended for steering. Even if the wheel doesn't move, you're still where you should be to try to steer things. The best place you can be to steer things is in that driver's seat. If you're on the hood, and you say, oh my god, I'm going to take complete control over this. You're just going to get run over. You're going to fall down. Is it possible to steer the vehicle that way? Mm, yeah. In some extreme cases, you could actually say, well, I took extremely drastic action. The steering wheel wouldn't move, but I did this. I think it's just much safer for you to stay in the driver's seat. Does that make sense? If you have crisis in your life and you're trying to get control, some people do it this way. Some people are forced to. But in the particular case of trying to keep your sanity, I think it's much more important to grab the wheel. So what is that? What does that mean in everyday life? So let's get rid of the metaphors and let's kind of bring this back down to earth and and talk tangibly. In the example of, let's say, let's put it away from you and onto another person, someone you care about. Someone in your life has something really critical going on. They're going through a really hard time, let's say in a relationship or something. Okay, so someone, you know, a friend has a relationship that's really just gone crazy, whether it's the person's wife, whether it's the person's boyfriend, what have you. You look at it from this outside view. It's really easy to see what's wrong and how to fix it, but you're not them. So helping them to grab the wheel is is just being there, being there for them, talking, keeping things grounded. You do this five times 
nothing happens. That means you're still in the driver's seat with them. You're still holding on to this wheel and acting like you can turn it. You can't because that's just the way relationships work sometimes. And that's the amount of control we have over other people's relationships. And rightly so. The sixth time you start to hear about change. Something's happening. Oh, okay. So something finally sunk in or the person you're dealing with finally found the wherewithal, the energy inside to go, yeah, I kind of do need to make this change. I was really scared and so on and so forth. Those times built up and those times made a big difference. When you were in the third one, you're like, I'm just talking to a brick wall. Well, no, you're not really. You're just grabbing onto a wheel that seems like it's never going to move. Contrasting that with them telling you something about the relationship that you go, oh my God. And you call up the person and say, hey, I heard how you're treating my sister or my friend, blah, 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 blah. And you, you're, you're jumping onto the, the hood ornament and you're trying to steer this thing. And, and now all hell breaks loose because you really shouldn't have gotten involved in that level. Is there a chance that this person then shows their true colors and your friend says, wow, I, you really brought to light this in such a movie fashion and I hear the violins and all this stuff. What do you think? Do you think that there's a really great chance for that to happen? Or do you think there's a microscopic chance for that to happen? And it mostly only happens in sitcoms and movies and television. Ding, ding, ding. So more likely than not, it's going to make things worse. Or even, even if it does push things in the direction it's supposed to be, your friend didn't really necessarily learn about the wheel. So what happens next time? And there's probably going to be a next time because he or she is going to repeat this. And you're going to look like the person who's supposed to intervene, which is really not your place. I'll give you another example. You set a New Year's resolution, because you didn't listen to me, for losing weight. And it didn't really work, right? Because you just set a New Year's resolution. So you decide to jump through the windshield and hold on, grab the hood ornament. So what you do is one day you tell your friends, yeah, I don't eat the following nine foods anymore. Yeah. Or I just starve myself constantly. We all know our bodies want to stay alive. And when you mess with that, bad things happen. Everyone gets the rebound weight. Everyone gets in deeper and their body goes, see... Now you're starving. This is what I was trying to prevent. So you should eat three of those now. And that's what happens when you grab the hood ornament in that case versus grabbing under the wheel. And you're like, okay, Mark, I, I grabbed under the wheel. I did the thing. I, I did the thing. I did the thing. I go on an exercise. And again, on the sixth time, you might not see much difference. I bet you're starting to feel healthier. I bet you like yourself a bit better because you know that when you ask yourself to do something, you'll actually do it. So that in itself is a huge thing, but most people don't talk about that. But when you're doing this exercise program, that's this reasonable, realistic exercise program that has the T word, it's tangible because there's a tangible result at the end. When you get to the eighth or ninth time and you see that progress is being made because you didn't gain a hundred pounds in a week. So you ain't going to lose it in a week, right? You gained it over a long course of compensation, self-denial, uh, rewarding yourself for no reason, saying, oh, well, I, I, I'm just going to eat anyway. I'm, this is where I am. What difference is another pound going to make? The same thing applies to going backwards so that your body goes, oh, OK, well, no big deal. We've lost a pound today. I guess we could lose another one tomorrow. Who cares? No big deal. And your body just doesn't react because you grabbed onto that wheel and you're holding on to it and you're going, oh, uh -oh it budged, it budged a little. I can turn, I can turn a little bit more. I can turn away from the rewarding myself with a donut. I can turn away from the, I'm bored, so I'm eating. I can turn away from the, I'm so upset. What a shitty day this was. I deserve to have this meal that's five times the size it should be. When you start to turn, you realize that the wheel does move. And you realize that jumping onto the hood is really going to cause a lot of damage. Those are two tangible examples. I've experienced both of those personally. And not only personally, but 
I've experienced them through other people as well. So I have double experience in the tangible tangibility of what I just told you. So I would submit to you that this does actually make sense and it does work. So in the future, please think about that whole wheel thing and grabbing the wheel. So when you're on your third try on something and it seems like the right thing to do and you're just putting the effort in and it doesn't seem to be working, think of this and think of just holding on to that wheel. Maybe it budged a little bit. Don't give up. Okie dokie. As always, let me know. Did it work for you? Did this make sense? Please let me know. Thank you. Hey there, thanks for listening. You know I always appreciate your feedback, right? Well, here's your chance. You can connect with me on Instagram, via the Alchemy for Life site, or most other social media. If you like this podcast, you may love my new book, Alchemy for Life, Formulas for Success. The 239-page paperback is available on Amazon and everywhere else you get your books. All this info is available at Alchemy for Life. Thank you. See you next week.